It's my pleasure to introduce Unbounded Capital founding partner, Jackson Lasky, here on the webinar today. He will be presenting on AI and blockchain. Is this a lot of hype? It's a lot of opportunity? Can you make sense, sense for us, Jackson? I'll do my best, Zach. Uh, appreciate you having me back again. I always enjoy getting to talk about different types of things in these webinars. Um, yeah, AI and blockchain. You know, so I've been at the blockchain game for like five years plus at this point. And so when a new technology like AI that can kind of maybe change the trajectory of blockchain adoption, provide new use cases for blockchain, um, and just, you know, it's an ex extremely exciting technology in general. It's really captivated uh, the imaginations of our team at Asset Layer trying to figure out how we can take advantage of this new technology. Uh, so I wanted to just take the opportunity to share a little bit of uh, my perspective here, some of the things that we're doing, some of the things that I've seen other people doing, some of the things that I think are possible in the short term. So I guess, yeah, spoiler alert, I'm all for double hype here. Um, double hype or double opportunity. Uh, that was not my original subtitle. I want it to be more of a question. Is it? Uh, never mind. Let's just dive in. All right. So what I'll talk about are just some of the early opportunities that come from this intersection of AI and blockchain, highlight a few existing projects, and especially I'll talk about some of the ways that the uh, the adoption of both AI and blockchain are impacted by each other. And just a quick fun thing for this little image right here, I asked Midjourney, which is one of the more popular image generators, um, AI image generators, to create an image for the prompt blockchain plus artificial intelligence. So according to AI, this is what that looks like. Um, you know, on the topic of image generation, there's a lot of elements of AI and generative AI, which is sort of you know, the, the most exciting element today, at least from my standpoint. There's a lot of applications. You know, for example, I wouldn't want to be in the modeling business right now. Uh, we've seen some really big deals get done. You know, the creator of Stable Diffusion, which is one of the most popular image generators, you know, are they're raising an evaluation of a billion. A company that we are actually using their product at Asset Layer is this company, Scenario GG. Um, they raised six million from Play Ventures, uh, the VR fund, a couple of other funds, and they're specifically focused on generating assets for games. And this is one of the first actual examples that we have of AI plus blockchain being used in conjunction. And it's more of an obvious use case um, you know, the, the main thing that's happened is that people use NFTs to sell images that they created using AI. Um, now, a lot of people have been maybe critical of this, saying that it really is cheapening the value of digital art and digital art NFTs. And that's probably hard to argue against. I, I, prob I would more or less agree. Um, I don't think that that is necessarily where there's a big future. I see it more as a really valuable way of generating assets to actually use in applications like games and where NFTs are a way of managing those assets in a game, uh, selling assets in a game and moving assets across games. So I wanna jump out of the presentation really quickly and move over to a article that we actually recently published um, about how at Asset Layer, we used AI to create new NFT content for our gaming ecosystem, Durodox. And ultimately we came to a process where we can generate new content for our game in under 30 minutes using our platform asset layer, as well as some of these newer AI tools. So I'll just jump to some of the highlights. You know, the, the type of process really here is that we're going from just a prompt like this you know, two-dimensional digital drawing of gold necklace with a star pendant, front view, white background, simple clip art illustration with bold colors and a black outline. Um, getting an image like what you see here and then distributing it into our game where now it's being equipped to a dog um, and where that asset, that dog are being moved across games 
using NFTs. So I'll just highlight a couple of the fun things um, about how this was done. You know, one of the tools we used is Midjourney, which I mentioned, and that's just a tool where you take a prompt and you're generating these visual assets. So here's a few prompts we used and the resulting assets. One of the things that we liked the most was this gold star that we generated where we selected our favorite image, we blew it up, and we turned it into an NFT, and I'll show you more about how we did that shortly. I also talked about Scenario GG, which was the other um, AI engine that we used to create assets. Scenario GG works differently. Instead of going from a prompt, you actually train your own generator. So what we did is we trained three generators. So we uploaded some of the existing um, necklaces that we have for Durodogs, some of the existing glasses that we have for Durodogs, and some of the existing hats that we have for Durodogs. And so now we had these three different models that we had trained that could generate new content for Durodogs. And what was really cool about using Scenario GG is that it was extremely creative and created some things. A lot of this, a lot of it wasn't really usable, but some of it was really easy to use out of the box. And some of it was very unique and things that we would have never thought of or been able to come up with on our own. A couple quick examples, these two hats. I don't know what they are, but I like them. And so we decided to turn them into NFTs and distribute them through our game. So, you know, from generating the asset, it's really just a matter of, for us, formatting it to fit our models. And then, you know, we created these 24 assets that we ended up releasing. You can see all these dogs with their new outfits. We used our platform to mint the NFTs and distribute them through the game. And at the end, we get something like what you see here, where through gameplay, you're actually discovering this NFT. So this player just received this AI generated uh, NFT. They're gonna go ahead and put it on their dog. Now their dog's wearing this cool new outfit and then they can bring it into an entirely different game where those assets are being transported. And that is a really great early example of how we can use AI plus blockchain to create very different types of NFTs. And this is actually the first example that I'm aware of and I've searched, but I think I'm pretty sure it's the first example of actually AI generated assets being distributed in a game using NFTs. So really- so, yeah, a, 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 Just a question for you here. So this is kind of the first example of it happening. Um, I don't know if you can hear the dogs barking. This doesn't usually happen near my house, but interesting timing with the game Duro Dogs. Um, how would this work for like Fortnite? So what would, you know, generative AI NFTs and how would that work if you're saying playing Fortnite and going to, you know, more, more popular games? Well, I think it's, you know, it's in the eye of, eye of Beholder, which is a more beloved game, let's say Duro Dogs or Fortnite. <laughs> um, in terms of the number of players, I would say Fortnite has the edge. It's a really similar process. Um, you know, Scenario GG, they're working on being able to generate more complex types of assets. So Duradogs is a 2D game, Fortnite is a 3D game, but generating 3D assets, 3D models is something that people are already doing. It's a little bit harder, I think, but we're, I'm sure that it's going to advance quickly to be able to accommodate those types of assets. Um, as far as the NFT component for Fortnite, you know, one of the main differences I would say between a Fortnite and a game like Durodogs is that Durodogs is really designed and oriented to take advantage of an NFT-based creator economy, whereas Fortnite is not. But that's not necessarily to say that Fortnite has no use for NFTs. Probably the main way to apply NFTs in a game like Fortnite today would be to turn uh, some of the ownable cosmetics in Fortnite, namely skins, into items that could actually be traded for real money. Um, you know, and they're selling several billion dollars worth of these cosmetics every year. So it, it's a big opportunity for them. I think that there's some complexity in terms of how to go about it and 
Fortnite is so, so successful that I don't really see them being the first mover here uh, because it's probably more risk than reward for them, you know, at this point in time. But absolutely, you know, this is a, an applicable technology, this combination of AI and NFTs in games, whether it's more of a proof of concept type thing like Durodogs or a game that's operating at massive scale like a Fortnite. Another really powerful combination um, is AI and micropayments. And I actually think micropayments can be used to solve some of AI's biggest challenges today. One of those challenges is how do you actually monetize an AI model? You know, we're seeing this massive proliferation of different models that are trained on different data that have the ability to do different types of things. And so there's a question as to how do you actually monetize that type of model and one of the challenges is that it's unclear whether the traditional payment mechanisms would be appropriate. You know, there's so many models possible that having a subscription to each one seems unrealistic, but generating just one image is maybe not enough uh, value to justify the cost of a credit card payment. So I think that micropayments present a really, really fantastic way of monetizing AI models and I'll just show you one quick example here. There's a project that was actually built on the BSV blockchain called Ask Happy. Um, it's the first app that actually is combining AI and micropayments. And the way it works is basically, I can just provide a prompt. I'll go ahead and provide the prompt, AI and blockchain webinar. And I can pay to have any of the major models generate an image. I'll go ahead and use Midjourney just because I like Midjourney a lot. And Happy is thinking. And and there we go. So I don't think this is a very good <laughs> visualization for AI and blockchain webinar. You know, it's probably a tricky prompt. But here we go. I paid four cents. I got this image. I can actually mint it as an NFT, which is pretty cool. Um, but I think that this is just a really promising way of actually paying for the use of AI models, um, especially as the number and diversity of models continues to grow over time. Another major problem that AI is facing and kind of a barrier to adoption is the fact that a lot of these AI models are trained on data that it's unclear exactly who the rights holders are and who should be paid or compensated for the data that they provided that trained these models. One lawsuit is Getty Images suing Stable Diffusion for the misuse of copyrighted materials in their model. Now, I think that in, or Haste Arcade, which is an unbounded capital portfolio company, through a totally different use case, actually shows how micropayments could be used to solve this problem. You know, Haste Arcade, Probably a lot of you guys have heard this if you've been to our webinars before, but they've basically created this instant leaderboard payout or ILP model for games where every time a player plays, they pay a small amount, let's say 10 cents. And then every person who has a high score on the leaderboard gets a cut of that 10 cents. And that 10 cents often gets distributed to a hundred different people. Um, you know, this example right here is a nine cent payment that was paid to 85 recipients. So to me, this pairs extremely well with the idea of paying for AI models using micropayments. When that payment actually gets made, you could very easily see it in the future going out and paying the rights holders, maybe just for all of the uh, data that was used to create that model. But what would be even cooler is if you could pay rights holders based on the degree to which their data was used to train that specific or to generate that specific output. And I think that that'd be really valuable because it would incentivize the creation of data and that was particularly useful. Uh, so it would be really, really cool. This is maybe a little farther down the road, but I think that this is a really promising solution for one of AI's biggest problems. Another problem I think that AI has is related um, but it's this idea of how can I be sure that the model that I'm using is created in a way that is compliant, that's legal, that's ethical. And I think blockchain's trust and transparency can be used to really solve 
of this pain point for AI companies and for companies that are using AI. Because if you take that Getty Images example again, you know, if I am someone who used Staple Diffusion to create content that I then sold, you know, am I liable as well? Do I owe Getty Images money because I'm using uh, this model that was trained off of their data? So I think by using blockchain to actually, uh, in a very, very detailed and transparent way, record exactly what data was used to train these AIs, and also record every time this AI was used to generate new content, uh, that this would be extremely valuable in terms of protecting AI innovators, protecting creators and rights holders, and also protecting people who are using AI. Um, it could even get to the point where using smart contracts, using blockchain's computational abilities, you could actually have the AI models operating directly on the blockchain, which I think ultimately is the most trust worthy and transparent way of going about this type of business. So I think there's a really immediate opportunity to provide more transparency to the process. And I think that long-term, there's a really powerful opportunity to actually use blockchain to execute these models in a trusted and transparent way. So that's a bit about how blockchain can accelerate the adoption of AI. What about vice versa? I'll jump back into DuroDogs because I think that it's a really important model for how blockchain gets adopted. And one of the things that became really clear to me working at Unbounded Capital that's been a big motivator of what we're trying to do at Asset Layer is the fact that blockchain, it has this challenge in that there's an enormous long-term opportunity, but there's really significant short-term barriers of adoption. And those barriers are mostly based on the fact that blockchain is inherently a network. And so it's subject to extreme network effects. It's the classic chicken and egg problem for new technologies. And blockchain being a, network tech a networking technology is subject to that more than almost any other technology that's ever been created. So there's a question of how do you actually start applying blockchain successfully when the network attached to it is still relatively small? And I think that what we're doing with DuroDogs and Asset Layer is a really good example of how to take advantage of blockchain in this early phase. And I think AI has the ability to really supercharge what we're doing currently. Now, in a nutshell, um, you know what Asset Layer is, we're an NFT platform. We make it really simple to create NFTs, integrate them into applications and share them across applications. And I think NFTs have this enormous potential to be really the dominant way in which applications communicate in the future ultimately uh, surpassing the API. Now, DuraDogs has been a game that we've used to really pioneer using NFTs in this way. And DuraDogs also presents a model that we think a platform like Asset Layer and a technology like blockchain can really get adopted given the constraints that come from being a network-driven technology. Uh, DuraDogs is a game that's built around a Web3-enabled creator economy. So that means you know, creators creating not only new NFT content for DuraDogs, the way that we showed that we did early in the presentation using AI, but also creators creating new application content. So new games and apps, which are repurposing these DuraDogs NFTs in new environments. That's something that's already happening. It's something that we've done. It's something that third-party creators have done. And we now have eight teams who've joined our pri private beta in order to build new apps for DuraDogs. So I think that this type of creator economy, where a company creates a foundation of a new ecosystem, a new world like a DuraDogs, that presents a really great opportunity for smaller app developers to create a really highly targeted application and monetize an existing audience where those developers might not have been able to create and market their whole brand new world and IP. So the way that AI really transforms this opportunity is that AI allows this type of app developer, probably more than anyone else, not only to generate the assets they might need to create new games, but also code new games. AI, generative AI is amazing. It's an amazing tool for actually developing applications, writing code. And so I think that between tools like Asset Layer and AI, that this type of creator, this type of developer you know, this smaller, maybe one person or a small team 
they're going to be able to do so, so much more than they have been in the past, both because of the tools that AI provides that allows them to create the assets they need to write the code that they need, but also tools like Asset Layer that allow them to collaborate, interoperate, and work together to create this meta content, these meta games where you have lots of individual games created by different people that converge into this unified experience, which is really new and fresh and dynamic. And I think that this is one of the most promising avenues that we have for blockchain adoption. Um, and so it's something that we're really excited about at Asset Layer. Um, and we think DuraDogs, even if DuraDogs is maybe not going to be that game, that killer app, that app ecosystem that really catapults us to 100 million or a billion users, I think that it sets a model that's really, really well positioned to do that. And AI is just pouring gas on that fire.